Intuitive healer of Kashuk Records, your galactic race soul family, those who protect you, past lives and life and elsewhere in the universe. Max 21D performs remote viewing, remote viewing, deactivating chips and codes or programming, raising the vibrations and healing this great planet. We are co-creating a better reality. You're listening to Wolf Spirit Radio. Thank you, Ross. I want to first congratulate myself for having a beautiful wife, Nicole. (laughs) Anyway, uh, I'm only playing. Well, yeah, I mean that. I really mean that. Anyway, (laughs) I do love you, honey. I I love you, too. I didn't want to say that. I'm all a little... I'm a little high right now. I didn't smoke anything. I didn't. I just, uh, and a natural high. I want to thank everyone on um, here in the, uh, um, our own chat room here on zoom.us that uh, I want to thank them too because they got a really great uh, program here. I want to thank uh, Russ, my producer, my co-host, uh, John, Soul, my wife, Nicole, Vanessa, my moderator, and everyone in the uh, Wolfpack uh, chat room there. Thank you, everyone, for being here tonight. And everybody around the world that there's listening to the Max Steele Show. Our program today is, uh, is a man that uh, lives about three and a half hours south of me in Asheville, North Carolina. I can't give you the details unless he tells you. His name is Martin Rutherford. He has found a whole family of, of giants in his backyard. And um, I just want to welcome him to the show. Uh, Martin, uh, go ahead and come on in and uh, tell me how you get started and how did you find them? Because the pictures I see they're very close to the uh, to the surface. Yes, uh, the one I'm digging on now is he was he's right at the surface. That's kind of how I found him. Um, I saw his arm sticking out of the grass. But, um, I have to uh, um, put all my credit to go to uh, Roger Spur of Mud Fossils um, Mud Fossils University. Uh, I right. started watching his shows on YouTube and. He started telling me, you know, and, and he started educating me on the mud fossils and uh, how he found a giant fingertip and was able to get blood out of it. And he did DNA tests and all that. So he explained a lot of stuff going on. At first it seemed we- weird, but he started showing me, and he's a, he's a smart guy. And he told us, Everybody, you could go out in your yard and probably within 15, 20 minutes, you, you'll find a fossil. And so I got to thinking that I remembered the, I have some rocks down in my creek that are black, solid black. And I'll take, I'll think I'll go down there and look around. So I put my boots on and went down there and within like a minute or two, I started finding toes and fingers and uh, feet and hands and just all kinds of stuff. And... So I start throwing them up on the bank, you know, and it's just like one thing led to another. Um, I had no idea I had, you know, giants. I know I had a lot of body parts, but after about, I went down for a little while and then um, a couple of days later, I went back down and started looking some more and I started finding giant fingertips. And then I, I thought, wow, you know, I've got something here. So... I just kept collecting, 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 and my wife thinks I'm crazy, saving rocks. And um, so we had, what got it all started basically was I had to have a, I wanted to set two campgrounds on my property. 
and I needed someone to come in and make two flat spots. And in order to have a campground, those two campgrounds, I had to have a sewer to put in. So I found a guy that would put the sewer in and grade off uh, two spots. And they only had to go about a foot down. So they never, they didn't hit anything, you know. They just pushed about a foot of dirt over. And then they went down and they were doing, they were digging the sewer, but I couldn't stay there. I had to, I had to leave. And I come back a few hours later and, and they were done with it. And they had it all covered up and everything. So I was looking around and I found this really strange fossil. And it was about 22 inches long. And it had the bone showing on, about four inches of the bone was showing on the on one side. And it took me the longest time to try to figure out. I still don't really know what it is, but I kind of think it's a, it's a toe of some creature that has to do with my giants. But anyway, um, I, I was out mowing like I normally do, and I just happened to come up on that rock. I, I saw it, so I jumped off, and I got it, and I, you know, I could see right away it's, it's a bone, it's a fossil. So I've never seen something so big before. I like this, not a foot because it don't have the right shape. It don't have the right area where the bone goes in or nothing. And but you can see where the bone had come to an end, like it just either broke off or that was just the end of it, you know. So I put that online. I showed a bunch of people and a friend of mine, Ernie Gant. He said that it looked to him like it was a finger or maybe a toe. But he's, I said, yeah, but this thing's really big. <laughs> it's 22 inches long. So there was another day goes by, a couple more days go by, and I'm out mowing again. And I saw this rock sticking out of the grass. And so I stopped, and I went up to it and got looking at it. And it had, it had a, like a bone texture to it. It looked like a bone. I'm like, so I stopped in my tracks. So I started um, digging on it. Little by little, you know, I just started like scratching around and seeing what's going on. I was going to pop it out with my shovel because I didn't know what it was. I just knew it looked like a bone. So I kept digging around it and around it, and I'm going through clay, dirt, and clay. And that's where this is how I started learning on how to dig this thing up. I made a lot of mistakes in the beginning, but I was taking the clay out of, out of there and, and the dirt and just getting to the rock, to the bone. And I kept going and going, and I followed, I kept going uphill. And I got to about where his wrist is. And after uh, I quit for that day, I went back another time. And then uh, I was trying to find his hand. So I kept going, and it just didn't look right. Something weird is going on here. So I turned around, and I went the other way. And so I started digging, and I got down to where his elbow is, and his arm was all shattered. Busted up bad. He, it's busted like four or five pieces of bone, you know, busted. So I'm like, well, that's either an ankle or an elbow. I can't tell which. So I kept going on around. I followed the clay. And at this time, I wasn't destroying the clay. I was just getting the dirt out of the way because it was making a form. It was showing a body. You know, here's his arm. I'm, I'm looking at his arm like it's a, like he's laying there, you know, but he, it's clay. So... I'm taking the dirt off. I'm following the clay, following the clay. I get all the way up to his shoulder, and then it the dirt drops down and hits more clay, and that I drop down into where his neck is. So I, oh man, I've got this. Is, his head's still here. You know, this is going to be a full body. So I'm freaking out. Nobody will listen to me. My wife wouldn't listen to me. She was like, she's putting me down. Don't you know, get away from it. Stop doing it. Quit wasting your time and all this stuff. And I'm like. I mean, you don't realize what we got here. We have a full giant in a full scale. And I measured from the top of, I found, I kept on digging, and I come around his skull, and as I was going around his head, I noticed that he had damage, and I was finding a lot of of the, um, the black and red dirt, which is where he bled out. Because when you bleed from your artery, it turns black. And when you bleed from your... No, it's when you bleed from your vein, I'm sorry. When you bleed from your vein, it's black. And when you bleed from your artery, it's red. And he had damage on the back of his head in about three spots, right around his ear, 
I'd say right behind his eye, down around his ear area, back to the back. It was busted and like, you know, sunk down in like three spots. So I'm thinking, man, this guy must have been on a war. There must have been a battle here and someone just beat the crap, you know, just beat him to death. So I kept digging. I went around to the back side of his head and I started finding these, um, I didn't know what it was at the time, but it ended up being teeth, huge teeth. I mean, these things were like six inches long. So I laid them off to the side. I didn't even know what they were at first. And I kept going on around, going on around. And I'm like, man, I got his whole head is here. I got to where his eye should be. It's got the eye socket. And on the bottom part of his eye socket, is broken. So I'm like, man, he took a hit there too. So I kept on going. And I got around to the front of his face where his jaw should be. And I didn't see any jaw. So I kept poking around, poking around, moving dirt. And I saw like a sharp, it looked like a tooth coming out of the top of his head, like the, the canine tooth. So um, I said, well, this is definitely his mouth. And I could see other teeth in there. And when I got to about middle, midway down his mouth area, there was a whole bunch of teeth in there, just, just laying there. So I picked them up and they were totally different than the other teeth. These were thinner. They were about four inches long. And he, there's several types. There's, they got, just like us, you, know, you have a lot of different teeth in your mouth. Your front teeth are real thin, your back teeth are flat and for chewing, and you get your little, you get your canine teeth up front and all that. Well, it's the same thing with this guy. He has like four or five different types of teeth in his mouth. But his teeth, I noticed, had grooves on the side. So I got examining them, and I noticed that I keep finding these teeth that have the grooves on the side. So I, I got thinking, maybe he's got double rows and they grow past each other and that's the space they have to have in order to be there. Anyway, I went on around his, his mouth area and uh, I never did find his jaw, his lower jaw. It's, it was totally gone. But I got looking at it like, this guy took one big beating of his life. Someone just went crazy on this guy. Well. A couple of days later, you know, I'm doing more digging, and I went past his head, just above his head, like right in front of his nose, because I think his nose is still there, but I didn't want to dig out any of that clay, because if it's, if it's a full nose, I want to leave it, you know. So I noticed that um, I started digging the side up high and coming down, and I noticed that I hit clay right above him. And then I cleared out an area about maybe three feet, three and a half feet wide, and I started finding more teeth, but totally different. They were, they were really fat and just bulky and heavy. When you, when you compare the size to its weight, it was like really condensed, really, really heavy teeth. So I got to think, well, that's not his teeth because his teeth are totally different. His teeth are thin. So I just put them up on the side. I didn't really know what was going on yet. And I got to think, well, maybe there's a, some creature, dinosaur, or something running around. And they, he had to fight them, and maybe they knocked his, he knocked his teeth, their teeth out or something. I, I didn't know what was going on. So I kept digging down, and I hit, this, I hit the clay. And I'm like, he's got something in front of his face. And I couldn't figure out what this was. I said, there's something, laying, there's something right here in front of his nose. In fact, it's over his nose. So I kept digging and digging. It took a few days for me to realize what I had. And I went around and around and around. And then I went, I thought there was a gap between this thing and his head. So I'm thinking that it had a, like a, it, it's what it was, what it is, is it's, a, it's a mouth with his head in it. Because this thing's got, it's got fangs. It's got, I hope people aren't thinking of, you know, I'm not lying. <laughs> this thing has, it has two fr things that on the, it's got four in the, at the top and four at the bottom. And they're all in the front, very, very front. But they're on the inside, the inside gums. He's got two rows of gums, whatever this thing is. On the inside of his mouth, and inside the gum, sticks down further than the outside gum by about four inches. And it had the, t the fangs, and the, he had, he's got two fangs going into the back of his head. And he's got two fangs going up under his, in the roof of his mouth. 
and he's locked down tight. Well, I didn't know he was locked down tight, but I finally realized I went deeper. I decided to go through some of the clay. I'm going to dig into this clay a little bit and see what this is. And I started finding more teeth. And that's when I started seeing the, the fangs. Now, so this guy's got two sets of gums, an inner side that's longer and an outer side that's like four inches shorter. So I figured that's what killed him. This thing came in. Now, you got to remember, this giant's got a, his head is six feet across. From the front of his forehead, he's got, a, he's got a short forehead. But from the front of his forehead to the back of his head is six feet. And this, this creature, dinosaur or whatever it is, is, has his head in its mouth. And he's totally got almost the whole thing. And, and I kept, so I kept on looking for, I went back and, you know, later I, I was following his hand up his, his arm. And I never did find his hand. So I started going a little deeper. I started going into the soft clay. And what I'm finding out is every time I go into their gums, it's a 50-50 mixture. It's like 50% clay and 50 percent dirt, roughly, because it crumbles. But if you pick it up and you squish it, you can still pack it. It'll pack really good. Like, you know, you're making a clay ball. So I decided I'm just going to dig into that because roots and stuff, grass is growing in it anyway. You know, the, the roots won't grow in the clay, but they'll grow in the dirt mixture clay. So I thought, well, I need that out of the way anyway. So I started digging down in there, and I'm finding more teeth, just like the other thing. It's got the mouth around his head, but it's smaller. So I'm like, wow, whatever this thing is, this could be the mother holding him down, and this is a baby eating his hand. His whole hand is inside the mouth of this other thing. His hand's probably three feet wide. You know, this this dude, this thing is huge. This giant's huge. Um, so I kept on doing it, and sure enough, this thing had the same exact shape as the mother. I'm saying mother son because I don't know what else to say, <laughs> what to call him, because he he's like. He's like he's not even a teenager side. You know, it's like when you look at how big the mouth is on the one and then look at his mouth, he's like, he's just a little kid. So I got looking, and he had the same exact bone in the center of his mouth, had the same kind of teeth but smaller. And I'm like, holy crap, he's got, I wonder how many more children are eating on him. So evidently the mother's holding him down because, you know, I got digging around the back of his head where the fangs went up in there, and I found his neck bone, and his neck's broken in two. And you can see the, the part that goes into his body and the other part going up into his head. And then his arm is totally pulled off of his body and laying, like, in front of his throat, like, right under his, his where his jaw would be. So his arm is laying in front of him, and his his head is level with his body. Because I got to thinking, well, his... If he's laying on his left side, looking up the hill, his shoulders should be sticking up higher than his head, you know. But I got looking, and it's like his head's the same level as his, as his body was. And then I got looking over, I started digging around, and I could see that it was separate. They're not the same thing. And, and I, I started, I dug around where his arms should be, and I got bones there and a little recess spot where it looks like, you know, it used to be there. <laughs> And then right next to that, just below that, there's another bite taken out of him. You can see the, the teeth marks where something came in and took a bite out of his body, out of his side. Probably once the arm was out of the way, something came in and got him in the side. Well, I decided to measure. I, I forgot to tell you, I, I measured from the top of, I call the, the giant Rex, just so I could say, hey, Rex this and Rex that. I measured from the top of Rex's head down to his elbow, and he's eight feet. So I figure a person, a six-foot man, your, from your head to your elbow is two feet. So I figure he's four times bigger. So I'm thinking, well, six times four. So he's probably around 24 foot. It's just a guess. But now the more I dig on, the more I think that he's going to be in a bunch of pieces. I was doing some digging today, and I found another bone, a decent-sized bone, and I found a mouth attached to that, and it's even smaller than the other mouth. So I don't know what part of his body is is over there. It's like a, it's a few, and it's, I forgot how many feet. Probably a good five or six feet away from him. And I had to quit digging. I had to go somewhere. So I'm like in the middle of a great find, and I had to stop. So I'm really, you know, really excited about that.
Uh, Martin, I just wanted to ask you quickly. I know it was probably hard to find um, hand digits and, and feet on, you know, toes on the feet. Were you able to tell how many fingers and toes that could have been on some of the... No, I, I, the only way that I'm going to be able to find that hand is I'm going to have to dig into the, the animal, it's the dinosaur or whatever it is. Right, but, the bigger uh, thing that's, that's in case. I'm going to have to tear his mouth apart and his face apart to get to where that hand is. So I figured if I could just find his other hand, because, you know, he's laying on his left side. So the left hand is, I haven't found yet. Okay. And I haven't went past his waist yet. I went, I went just a little bit below his, his uh, elbow, and then I went about another maybe five feet, and I kept finding bones scattered in different spots, and I don't know what they are. I can't tell what they are just yet, but they're solid. They're not moving. Like, you know, you find a, a tooth laying somewhere, it's it just laying there, and it'll, it'll... These things, whatever they are, they lose their teeth, like a shark does. When a shark bites down on, say, maybe someone's boat or something really hard, their teeth fall out. Right. Like, like, and they got more teeth that just rotate and come back into place later. Well, I think that's what, the, what it is with this, with, with this here. So but, it's, more, uh, it's more than just a double set of teeth. It's like um, a, a, it, it uh, reproduces itself. They keep finding more and more teeth. You have a lot of teeth, yeah. And, and it looks like they're like sideways instead of being, you know, straight down, straight. turned yeah. to an angle. And he's got like flat teeth and pointy teeth. And he's got, um, they got like a, a shark tooth looking thing. It looks almost like a shark's tooth. But, um, yeah, so I haven't mm -hmm. found too much because I don't want to, I keep r running into clay. When I got, when I got to that other little creature that's on his hand, I kept going and going, and it's just clay after clay, and it's rippled, rippled clay, rippled clay, rippled clay, like it's a form of something. And the only thing I can think of is this thing might have a wing. It could, it could be a flying creature, a flying dinosaur or something, and it's got its wing up over the baby to protect it while it eats because she's got a death grip on this thing, on his head, and she ripped his head, just about ripped his head off his shoulders. She broke, you know, his... his uh, neck bones about four inches away from each other, the top part and the bottom part, where she just pulled him to that one side. And wow. he, he, he's, he was dinner. But the, 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 the thing that I can't figure out is how did he get preserved? It had to have been, this had to happen when the earth was flooded. Because if your oceans rise, you got salt water. Everything's salt water. You're not going to be able to eat. You're not going to be able to drink. You're not going to have nowhere to quit swimming. <laughs> nowhere to, you know, you got nowhere to park yourself. So you're going to die. Boom. But these were like in the middle of eating him, and they stopped while they're in the middle of eating him. I can't figure out what happened. It's like they froze. Bam. Whatever killed them, killed them all at the same time. Because the mother's cramped down, the baby's cramped down, everybody's cramped down. And you would think that if they had a, like, say, if someone's coming to get them, they would be spooked and they'd let go and then either run or whatever. Just like you're going down the road and there's a, a dead animal and a crow's trying to eat him. Well, the crow hears you coming, he takes off. So I can't figure out how they, they're, in a, they're eating, they're biting down, but they died like that. And they didn't, like, release their grip. You know, the, the gums are tied up to the, the, the bones. It is tight. I can't because I was hoping I could go in there and there'd be a gap and I could dig down and come under the arm and, and stuff like that, and look at it on the, from the other side. But there's, there's just there's clay, and I don't want to destroy it. So um, the the other thing that happened was at the same time that I was digging him up before I got to where his head is. Uh, my wife didn't like the job that those guys did on the camping spots. She goes, "This ain't gonna work." She goes, "They're not wide enough." We got. We need a lot. We need a, like at least ten more feet wider. So I've got a backhoe. So I decided. To, well, I told her. I said, "Well, I'll go down about another foot, and I'll just push it all over." So I went down on one end. Uh, I'd say there's a good. I don't know it's probably twenty, 20 uh, thirty some feet is probably about what we got it as. I haven't really measured it, but down at the the one end, I started digging down. And I started seeing, because I'm used to seeing the body parts, I knew I knew it wasn't rocks I was digging up. 
and I started seeing parts. Well, I thought I was seeing fingers, so I stopped. And I jumped down and got to looking, and I was I, I was looking down in the hole, where you know, because I dug down the the one scoop that I did, and I looked down in there, and I saw something flat, and I kind of thought, well, maybe that's a hand, because the hand your hand their hands will be flat. And a lot of times the fingers just fall off. That's why we're always finding fingers and toes and stuff. They they just fall off. And I've I have found two palms um, out in the creek. One of them's like 15 inches wide. So it's it's big dudes, you know. But anyway, um, so I got my shovel and I started uh, digging around and I got kind of careless. I put my shovel down behind one uh, a rock. And when it popped, when it came off, it, it actually popped. It was a loud pop. And I was like, what in the world was that? So I get looking at it, and it's shaped like a vertebrae. And I got looking around, and w one of the scoops that I had done, I think I ended up, I had taken out like three scoops before I actually knew that I hit him. I, I busted his back, his back out, but I missed his rib cage. So I don't know how I did that, but it's like as I was coming down with the with the thing, I I got I scraped his body because he's all he's solid clay. I scraped his body, and then I hit the backbone and I brought the backbones up. So I had like six vertebrae laying there, and you can line them all up and say you know boom boom boom. There's his there's his back. So I jumped down in the hole and got looking, and I could see where it came off at, and it had the 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 dirt. It had like a dirt clay. It was black, so I knew he'd been bleeding, and I felt his body, but I couldn't tell there was, I couldn't tell what part of him I was at, if I was at his chest or lower part or upper part, and it, I think he was laying because of where his back is, and most all the bodies that I did find were they're laying with their head uphill, so if you if I looked at the way the back was on the back side of him, it's like his head's laying his his head's uphill and he's laying on his right side. But I didn't see any arms or anything, so I don't know if his arms probably folded. And they're not in no caskets or nothing like that. They they were just two feet under the ground because the first guy took a foot off and I took the second foot. And I might have went a little bit deeper than I should, and that's when I hit that one. So I put a, I stopped. I told my wife I didn't want to mess with, I didn't want to do the campground, you know, the camping spots because we've got bodies in there. She insisted. Da da da. So I thought, well, maybe I can bring more dirt in. So. But I decided I went down to the other end where my drive by the driveway because I have to I had I wanted to make it more level coming in instead of like a drop off coming in, and I popped up another backbone, but this one was like twice the size of the other one, and I couldn't even pick it up with one hand. It was so big, so I looked around. I could see where it would come out at, and the and the dirt was yellow and black and red. I had all these colors. And I'm like, oh man, so. I kept talking to her, what should we do, what should we do? And I said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to dig, I'm going to go down as far as I can. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to skim it the best I can and not go deep. Because the other guy, I missed him just by a little bit. You know, I just went a little too deep and I caught his backbone. So I skimmed it. I went about half a foot, maybe a little more. And I started finding more teeth. Teeth were falling, coming everywhere, all over the place. Like, what in the world? And it looked just like the the dinosaur monster, whatever it is. It's got Rex's. Is, it's attached to Rex's head. It's the teeth just like that, but bigger. I found like three different sized teeth. So I know there's like there's a there's three different size, whatever they are, at least. And then there's those other ones I just found, the little ones. But um, the, after I've found out that what happened to Rex, but then I got to thinking, well, what happened was there was a major, they were attacked and eaten, and I guess they just threw them in a thing and buried everybody. I, I don't know how it got there, but they're one right after another. Anyway, I skimmed down, and I hit a few of them. I got down like I was touching their bodies, and it's solid packed clay. You could tap it, and it slaps, and it's beautiful clay. And one of them, I got it on one of my films. You'll, uh, he has a hole in, in, his, in his side. And I thought, well, maybe he was stabbed. And when I, I looked at the dirt that's in there, I, I started scooping the dirt out of the big hole with the big hole in his side. 
and you can it's what had happened was that's one of the fangs went in there it's a perfectly size for the fang to fit i was sitting there thinking a spear you know because i'm thinking men battling each other i had no idea you know they were getting eaten when i when i found that you know it was it's much later that i realized that they were a uh, monster thing was eating them but anyway um I had, I scraped it, I, I dropped my blade down and I scraped going backwards and you can see every hump, every clay hump of where a body is. And there was um, two areas where there's a, there's two more bodies that are like laying across those. I don't know, they might be smaller. Maybe they threw the children in there, I don't know. But they, everybody else is lined up perfectly with each other with their head facing uphill. And I don't know why, but they're laying on their sides. The two, the two, the end ones, the two end ones that I dug up, they're laying on their sides. The other ones I couldn't tell because I really didn't want to dig them up just yet. I started talking to some friends and they said, nah, you, you got too much going on. You need to just go ahead and cover them back up. So I brought some more dirt in and I, I put dirt on top of them. They're, they're, they're not deep. If anybody ever wanted to come out and, and dig one up, we could. It wouldn't be nothing. But um, I've got different size giants. Um, there's another, my first section, my first campground section, um, they're bigger. They were big, bigger um, mounds of clay. And I didn't know it at the time when I was, when I, I tried to do it myself. Um, I, tried to, I tried to smooth out an area, and the more I messed with it, the more I had the rolling clay, you know, up and down. <laughs> and there was like, I've got either six to eight bodies laying across that one. And I didn't know it at the time, but I finally realized once I found those others, then I knew what the other thing was, you know, that I have more bodies there. So I have around 20 bodies in one area. I've got either six or eight in this other area. And then I was digging, I was uh, digging with a ditch witch to run some water lines. And I ran across three more bodies. Uh, one was a small, younger one. I end up get pulled. I, I end up knocking his uh, th throat bone, you know, like his neck bone, out. And then the other two, I uh, hit their backbone. So I don't know if they're laying on their front or what, but I end up getting a beautiful red clay out of those spots. And I really hated to dig. I hated that I had to dig that. I had to dig it by hand because when I hit them rocks, it just bounced. I think wouldn't dig it. There was one area I had to reroute where I was going to put my water. I think I hit the head of the of one of the giants up in the number one spot, my highest, my higher uh, camping spot. Um, I hit solid. It was flat rock, solid, and so I had to quit and reposition and put it in a different place. But I kept hitting. I kept um, popping up bones out and it's everything from mostly teeth. But evidently, these things, when they're, when they're eating people and they're biting down on their hard heads and all that, their teeth are falling out. Because I feel buck, I've, I've got, I don't know how many buckets of teeth, and they're, they're mostly teeth. Uh, let me ask you a question. Um, sure. Why are you using heavy equipment to dig them out? Uh, normally, you don't, do, you don't use that kind of stuff. Well, see, that's that. I hit them by accident because when I hit the one, um, I didn't know there was going to be more. But when I got down to the other end, I thought, well, I'll get down this other end and see how far I can go before I hit something else. And I hit it right off the bat. So that's where. Um, but it was my wife made me, you know, wanted me to make that spot there, even though I tried my best to talk her out of it. And I said, we're putting a thing over a graveyard. She don't believe me. She doesn't believe what it is. So, but the, the Rex is right on the surface, and the the animals that are eating on them, they're on the surface. So I've been working all, all around that, and I haven't come to where I can end of anything to where I can actually go down and go under and see what the other side looks like. Um, I, I, I did a video today. I'll probably put it out. I'll probably download it tomorrow because it takes a long time to download. I'll download it tomorrow, and I'm showing how I, I dig up the sod, I remove the sod, and then I take a brush, and I brush the loose dirt, and then anywhere I see that the grass had, had made roots and went deep, 
I go ahead and I pop that out with a screwdriver because it's only going to be the 50-50, 50-50 on clay and dirt. So I pop all that out, and then I take the brush and I run around, run around, and then you can see the outline of the out part of that body, if it's the head or whatever, the, the mouth area or cheek or whatever, and you can see it wavy. It's all kind of like waviness. And then I get to an area where I find um, more like ro rocks that are in, set in real tight, and, and you know they're into something. They won't. They don't move. And I got go, got around there, and there was a big root. And the bigger the root, the deeper the, the it's, they seem to go. And that's what I was hoping I'd find a lot of because I want to hit regular dirt so I can dig down under them and come up from underneath. But um, so I dug out this one area, and it's a big round circle with a rock pattern around it. So I don't know if that's like an eye and maybe that's the bone around his eye or a nostril that they breathe through. It wasn't, I don't think it would be big enough to be an eye. If anything, it might've been a nostril. And so I kept on, I kept moving downhill because I'm wanting to come off that head. I'm thinking that that creature is laying on his right side, biting, biting him. So looking uphill. So I'm going downhill trying to get to the back side of his head. And then I found I found a bone. And I started I didn't have the camera going at the time, but I I filmed for a while and then I shut it off and then um I had about another hour to go that I could dig. So I, I kept digging like I was doing and I kept finding more I found uh, more teeth. And then when I got to where that bone was there was a lot of teeth that had fallen out. Whatever's chomping down on that piece of bone lost a whole, like, six or seven teeth. And they looked like the animal's teeth. They, they weren't, they weren't uh, the giant's teeth. They were thick and heavy and, you know, so I put them off to the side. And as I was digging down, going down into the 50-50 stuff, I started seeing more teeth that aren't going anywhere. You know, they're in the jaw. So I believe that's where the, I've got another jaw biting down on that, on whatever that is. I don't know if it's his arm or what, but it's it's a big bone, but I haven't, I wasn't able, I didn't have enough time to go too far with it. But it's exciting, and I've been trying to get people to, hey, you know, come on out, help me out with it. Um, we've My friend Ernie, he's got a hold of all kinds of people he's talked to, and they say, I have to, I got to prove, I got to show them DNA. I've got to get, and I can get DNA from the black dirt. The black and the red dirt will have the DNA in it. And I saved a bunch of it. And on the creatures too, I saved I saved some from it. I'm trying to figure out what that thing is. All right. Uh, the dollars to do DNA testing. Okay, Martin. Let me ask you a question. You got to slow down a little bit because I got a I got people that want to ask questions. Okay. And, and your friend Chris just showed up. But I got him muted. I don't want him talking yet. Um, okay. Now, uh, what I want to tell you is, it says, how long ago did you find these bodies? I mean, these skeletons. Okay, uh, about uh, two to three months ago. Okay, that's when you first started finding them, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, the the way that you're you're digging these bodies up um, with uh, heavy equipment um, and because these bodies are not that far, they're not that deep down, okay? You're, yeah. you're actually ruining what, you're, what you got there because uh, heavy equipment is not used when you find fossils like this. They, yeah. have, they have to be, uh, you know, uh, they use brushes and air and, and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But yeah. you could ruin what you got there if you can't continue um, to use the uh, the heavy equipment. You need to uh, first get the DNA out there, and, uh, have it uh, uh, processed to make sure that what you have is for real. I'm not saying that it's not, okay? Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that it's not. But people these days like to see proof, especially especially when you use a a university um, and uh, you use their equipment. They'll come out there, they'll take pictures and measurements, 
they use brushes and they start getting the facts and making sure that what you have is for real. Like I say again, I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying it has to be looked up, looked up by a, a professional. The uh, I'm running into is nobody even, I don't know if they think I'm lying or it don't exist. Maybe I got the one and only. I don't know. I've never seen nothing like this. The body is perfectly shaped. As with, hey, the clay is shaped. The, the, the flesh is the clay. And that's what uh, Roger Spur was telling me when I was watching his videos. He said that the, all the, he's a chemist, you know, he's been to colleges and everything. And he says our chemistry, what's in clay, is the same chemistry we have in our, in our tissue. And when I, when I found those, I'm like, wow, he is right. It's, a, it's clay around, you know, you got clay surrounding the, the, the bone. And if I take the clay away, it's like me peeling the flesh off, and I don't want to really do that. I had a lot of people say, why don't you dig down into the skull, to the bone of the skull? And I, yeah, but then he'll just look like a, a, a skeleton's head. You know, I, I want him to see what he looks like. And I can say, you know, hey, he's a Native American or he's, he's this or he's that. You know? I, don't, I don't think Native Americans were that tall anyway. Even back, even. Uh, those body looks, uh, they're way past a million years old. Way past that. Well, no, I feel they're they I feared like four thousand is what I was thinking. Four thousand oh, whenever the flood I I'd have to read the Bible again and see when the flood was, but um I believe they soaked it took about a year for all the waters to go down. And meantime they're soaking in salt water for a year. Um you know, years ago before they had refrigeration, if you didn't have your food in the in the creek, staying cold in the creek. You had to use salt or you had to smoke your meat. If you killed a cow, you'd have to smoke it or salt it, or it would go bad. There's no way you could eat it that in one day. That's true. What the salt did, the salt water cured cured the meat. And after all the salt went away, the water went away, then they just maintained it. They, they chemically changed to clay. And, mm -hmm. and that's what he was saying with the electrons in the air and the sunlight and the air and the Whatever, it just a chemical reaction. It just and it changed the clay, and the bones turned to almost like a rock. If you can see the texture in the bone in the rock. You can see it's a, it has a bone texture. It's definitely a bone. Uh, I have uh, hold on a second, Mark. Nobody else finding it, but I'm trying to wake people up, and nobody they brush me off. So I'm thinking, well, if they don't care, I'm just going to keep digging on on Rex and what's around him, and try to figure out what's going on here. I don't want to really remove him. Because I'd like to have the scene where everybody can come up and look at the scene of what's going on. Okay, uh, hold on a second. Uh, hold, hold on. You got to give me a chance to ask questions. You got to allow me to ask questions because uh, there's questions popping up here. And I got them here in my, uh, in my Zoom room here where it's been, the show's being broadcast from. And also uh, where my producer's at. Now, um, John, go ahead and ask him that question that you put in here. Um, yeah, I was um, trying to – the best source uh, for DNA would be to get uh, an intact bone. And if you got an intact bone, uh, which, uh, um, they can sample the bone marrow. The, the – the, um, the blood that's mixed with the dirt, that's going to have too much contam contamination. Hmm. Okay. And uh, I want to get historically, the Smithsonian, they, they want to suppress knowledge of, of this kind of thing. And they, they, they keep on, you know, hiding and disposing yeah. of giant skeletons. Well, it's in giant, they automatically, you know, so go the other way is they run from it. Uh, Roger Spur, he got DNA off of his giants, different ones. He had a lung that bled out real bad on the table. He was washing it and he walked away from it, came back a little while later and his table was just had blood all over the table. So he got up the sample and it was human, hundred percent human. And he, he got a fingertip and something else. I can't remember what, what it was, but he had like three different items and they all come up as human. 
and he can't get anybody to talk to him. He's he's called universities up and down. They laugh at him and if he, he he brings his stuff into the place and they like they run him off. He's so dis yeah, he's really depressed about it. That we can't get people to wake up and see what we got, that they've been taught wrong. We're trying to teach you something and you don't want to learn. Why? <laughs> What's going on here? But that's why I, I um basically say, Well, I'm just gonna go ahead and do my thing and I'll leave the, all the other ones buried. They're going to stay in the ground. Uh, I, only, I only damaged two of them, um, unless they're tore up from the animals eating them. Uh, but they're still good. There's, I've got plenty. Of, i got giants everywhere. i got plenty of them. They're all over the fields. Um, <clears throat> but when I was in my stream <clears throat> in the creek, I dug into the bank, and it was about two feet down, two maybe two and a half feet down, there's more body parts in there. I can dig in and I can pull out what they call, you know, mud fossils is what they call them. And so I knew that I've, it, these aren't in the creek. The creek happened afterward. If you think about it, these all these body parts were spread around, are everywhere, right? And the dirt and everything from over the years and over the years settled and the leaves and everything comes down and it built, the, the ground builds up as the years go by. Well, they end up having two feet of, of dirt on top of them, and then some major rain comes through, and a little water starts flowing, and it, it, it makes a creek, but it's like a branch. And then you, next thing you know, there's so much water and stuff coming through, it just starts pushing that dirt all away, and it uncovered all of those fossils, because I can walk from one end of my creek to the other. I have seven and a half acres, and I can walk from one end to the other, and they're everywhere. They're from one side, from one down, all the way down. And the creek even turns and goes up the other way, and they're all up through there too. So I know that whole. If I was to dig out that whole field, there's no telling what I'll find in there. And I found a a, a, a rock that looked just like a back tooth, and it was huge. It was bigger than my foot and everything. I mean, it was gigantic. So the. the I don't know what it come from. I don't know if it's a giant or a dinosaur, but it come from something that used to live, and it's huge. It was one of the back teeth, like a molar tooth. I've got a whole bunch of them. They all look the same. You know, you, you lay them out, and you say, okay, there's a molar, there's a molar, there's a molar. Here's a fang, there's a fang. Here's a canine, here's a front tooth, here's a back tooth. Yeah, and you just set them in piles and say, yeah, these all look the same, those all look the same, those all look the same. And then you get the other animal, the dinosaur or whatever, and his is totally different, but yet you can you can have feet, and they all look the same, and then you end up getting like different sizes. Okay, there was a big guy here, there was a medium-sized guy, and there was a small guy. You know, it's really weird. Wow. Scattered, their teeth are scattered everywhere. All right. Uh, do you have any pictures of any of the clay impressions that you saw? Um, I've got everything's on YouTube that I've done. Um, a lot of stuff I put on Facebook, but I can't get up close to get his full head because you know, his head's six foot across. So I have to kind of like back up so you can see it. But without him having his jaw, he's a lot of people had trouble telling what he was. They, they look at him and they can't see a skull. I don't know why. It's so obvious. He's got huge eyes. His eye sockets are really huge. And I didn't want to dig into the clay it's in where his eye is, because I figured that's got to be his eye. And you can see where his brain is. His, his head collapsed in the back, and you can see the bones sticking up. And it's all solid clay there, so it's like his brain's visible. It's like when they chomp down, I believe that when it, he first got eaten, it, it got him from ear to ear and bit down like two or three times and broke his, that's when it broke his jaw and broke his eye socket and busted the back of his head. And then it turned its head, and it grabbed him the other way. It grabbed him from the mouth to the back of the head. And that's when those fangs went up through the roof of his mouth, and the other two fangs went up in where his, his spine is, just, just in, in front of his spine. Because that's right where his backbone is. You follow where his backbone is, and there's these big, huge. And the fangs are like, they're probably at least three inches across. If you measure the thickness, so it has these huge, I don't know how long they are, on this one because they're up in his head and I don't want to I don't want to dig them out so 
I'm leaving everything like it is. I'm trying to do my best not to hurt anything, and I'm trying my best to get someone to come out here and to look at it and help me out, and I'm, we're not getting anywhere. I've, I've got friends helping me. Okay, okay. Let, let me say something, Martin. Do you want me to get you somebody to, to come out there and look at it? Sure. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'll take care of it. Uh, after Thursday, I'll have to do it Friday. I didn't want. I didn't want. I didn't want to do anything without your permission. Okay, so it's got a ground sensor scanner, whatever they call them things, the ground that they can. It shoots an image down the ground, and it lets you see what's actually down there. Well, the the people that I that I was uh, me me Martin, just hold, hang on a second. Okay. Me, my wife and myself, we were investigating this a little deeper last night. And uh, I got got a phone, a few phone numbers, to uh, a college out there uh, in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. I do have the phone and everything. I'm going to contact them Friday with your permission. Okay. And uh, I'm trying to get a hold of a place here in uh, Asheville, and they didn't write me back. But I mentioned Giants, and I probably shouldn't have said that. I should have just said I got a graveyard unmarked grave, shallow grave, uh, will you come check it out or something like that? And they probably would have wrote me back, but I told them they're big, giant, giant people and some kind of dinosaurs or something. I don't know. Okay. They didn't write me back. They might have thought I was joking or something. Okay. Hold, hold on a second, Martin. Uh, I got your friend here, Chris. Uh, yeah. he, uh, Chris, do you have uh, – uh, here, let me unmute you. All right. Uh, Chris, uh, I know that Chris – uh, you told me, Chris, send you some samples. Do you have those samples right there that we can see them here? Because my show, as soon as my show is over tonight, I'm going to put it on YouTube so people can see it. Yeah, no problem. They can also be seen on my channel. I'm sorry, everybody. I had the hardest time getting into this show, but I'm here now, so I apologize. Uh, you're you're fine, Chris. You're okay. Okay, so. I'm glad I'm on video here. This is the first sample. I didn't know because I was so small on the screen. Would do my best. Let me get you some light. Is that good light? Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. So this is the first sample he sent me. Now, and I'm going to actually pull them out and I'm going to show you what I originally saw on videos so that people can see why I asked them to send me samples. And of course, I'm going to be returning these to Rex. Uh, you can keep them. Well, I mean, honestly, they belong to the Discovery, you know. Um, but anyways, what I would see in his videos is just a couple rocks like that. And I just wasn't quite seeing it. And I've seen the pictures that he's posted, too. And uh, when you look at him closer, you definitely can see. I mean, even one of the original pictures he took before he dug down a little further, you can even see the clay outline nostril of the nose. The first one, just so people can see this, this is the tooth that I, and this is a guess because I'm not a dentist. I just received the samples. Everybody seeing that okay? Yeah, bring it up a little higher. A yeah, little, a little higher. higher. Okay, there, there we go. No, 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 not that high. Just bring it down a little bit. Okay. That, that's good. That's good right there. Okay. So this this is the front. Okay. Okay. And this is the back side. And part of the enamel is gone, but you can oh, see yeah. the cusp. You can see and that. That's, that. That's the blood inside of the tooth, the soft, spongy tissue inside of the tooth, the cusp on the back. And it's broken right here and the, the, the roots is gone. But this is this is the first sample that he sent me. Wow. Okay. And so you can see, you can see the cusp on the back here. Can everybody see that? Yeah. yeah. This is your, this is your serrations on the front. On the front, that would be like yeah. for grinding. Yep, that's your yeah. chopper. We're not sure if this is a lower tooth, but it's a smaller tooth. Um, yeah. He's missing a lower jaw, so we're not sure if this is. And we're not saying he's completely missing it. It's just not right there with the top of the skull right now. And yeah. reluctant to dig down anymore because we were some of the people that said, hey, 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 
is it's bigger than you and everybody. We, yeah. we don't want to dig down and, and ruin anything. At this point, we need to get you some financing and gridding, and we put out that uh, we put out that GoFundMe. I mean, to me, that looks like a bottom tooth. I think that what probably yeah, happened like was the jaw shattered somehow. I the jaw probably shattered. Yeah. Know, so, yeah. This is what throws a wrench in everything. He might have double rows of teeth, like historians talk about. This well, is. Well, they talk about it in the Bible: the six fingers, six toes, and and the uh, double teeth. You know. This is the second sample, everybody, and it's. I believe it's an uninterrupted tooth because it's so clean and crisp on the cutting edge. It's very sharp on the edges of the tooth. I believe this is a maybe a back row tooth because I looked up a kid with double rows of teeth and this right. matches one of the shapes of the back row teeth that he had. Right, because they are thinner and... Um, and it, it has sharp It edges. has that sharp the edge, top, yeah. The, the, the grinding surface. Yeah. And it has more of a root looking like structure to it. Like this was clean and it semi-petrified or fossilized inside the gum. So yeah. when I saw these were as real as they are, th at that point, then I was like, okay, these are changing from, because originally I was like, can I get a couple teeth for my mom? But when I saw that these were as real as they are, I'm like, no, these need to be returned to Rex. It's, uh, you know, in, in my belief, you know, he's real and these don't belong to me. They don't belong to the Joe next door. They belong to everybody. You know what I mean? And they belong to a being that once walked this earth. So these are getting sent back to the prayer. Back in place. <laughs> All right, everybody, hang on a second. Uh, we got to go into a break right now. We're at the uh, one-hour uh, segment of this show. We'll be right back in about three to five minutes, and uh, we'll continue with the program. Just hang on there, uh, Martin. Okay. Here we go. Take it away, Russ. Now back at the ranch. Welcome to the Captain Max Feel Show. You're listening to Wolf Spirit Radio. Thank you, everyone, for coming back. Uh, we're going to start getting into the important nitty-gritty committee here because it's going to get really good now. Uh, I got Charles, I mean, Chris here on the line on Zoom, and Chris Bird. Is that how it's pronounced? It's Baird. Oh, Baird. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not Bird, Bear. Okay. And he's a friend of uh, Martin. And, Martin, I'm going to allow the... Um, Chris, talk a little bit about what he, the experience he had with your samples, and then, and then on Friday, I'll, I'll get uh, the expert to start communicating with you. Is it okay that I give him your telephone number? Yes, he, he, he's, yeah, that's fine. Okay, all right, just get your permission, that's all I need. Okay, yeah. okay, uh, Chris, go ahead and, and uh, speak your piece, my friend. Well, basically, uh, the way I met Martin was through uh, a Facebook group I put up. And mine was uh, Titans, Giants, and Mud Fossils. And basically, I was allowing people to put different finds that they had of what was Titan remains on the surface of the Earth um, or supposed Titan remains, pictorial type things. And my piece of that puzzle is... Not so much the existence of them, because I believe they exist, but where did they come from? And, of course, I've heard about the Luck Club cave giants, but they're reportedly, what, 12, 15 feet tall. Um, the hollow earth giants, which are in a 12 to 18 foot range, that sort of thing. So when I saw, and, and then the titans, of course, so people are aware, if you look up Iceland Island, there's an island that's literally a petrified elephant and there are lots of things like that around the world even up the Poudre Canyon where I live there I was always told it's a rock formation but there's literally what looks like a petrified elephant laying on its side uh, even the details of the hips the shoulder 
the trunk section, the head, everything. And no matter where you drive around it for that whole three quarter circle around it, it looks like a laying down petrified elephant. But when you're little, you're told these are just rock formations. So um, we're talking about one and two mile tall beings petrified on the surface of the planet. Some of them with helmets, some of them with not that we have found. So when I saw this pictures by Martin, at first I was hesitant. I was like, okay, he's showing the outline of a dig around with the pose head. All I see is clay there. Is this just a, a happenstance clay outline of something? It doesn't quite look like a skull. In the original picture he put out, it was very blocky. Um, he hadn't brought out the definition yet, and so it looked very blocky and had a, a shovel on it. So then he dropped his first video, and when he dropped his first video and he showed what he showed on, that he found on the surface with the forearm going down to the wrist, then up to the elbow, then up to what looked like the shoulder blade and scapula, uh, the, that, that odd-shaped bone behind your shoulder, if I'm correct, I think it's called the scapula, and then the skull the jaw and you could see the gum line and the suture line in the upper jaw and teeth laying there. And he was showing the teeth in his hand. And I was just like, could it be in my lifetime that we have found something so great, you know, that Martin has found something so cool. But then I'm like, is this real? Is it not? I told him, I said, my mom's a rock hound. Can I get a couple samples from you? She would love to have a couple teeth, right? Thinking not in my life, are these long little six inch things he's showing teeth, you know, still in my mind until they reached me and I had them in my hand. That's when I had that. Whoa, 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 whoa. This, this has got enamel. It's broken. You know, there's a cusp on the back, all of those things. And so I went ahead because he had put his GoFundMe out about a week after I got the samples, two weeks. And I was just sitting on them. Uh, I had some financial difficulties or they would already be sent back. So they're getting sent back on the first. So I was sitting on them and he wasn't getting anywhere. So I thought, well, I'll talk to Stefan about this. Who's my friend through the hollow earth research. And we have a connection with that, which you had on the show a few weeks ago. I was in chat a little bit during that uh, one of those shows. And so, and I asked one question. I remember you asked it on the show, but I don't remember what it was at this point. But um, I asked Steph and I said, what can we do about this? You know, what is the proper direction? Where do we go with this? Because what our concern is, is that it is a great find. It's an awesome find. And if it can be validated and we can get the support, great. But right now, as it sits, everybody's like, dig, 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 dig through the mud, get to the bones, do all this stuff. And they don't understand we have a real opportunity here, given what he's found in the clay outline, the suture, in the jaw, that kind of thing, the detail. If it still exists, the base of the nostril in one of the pictures, um, those sort of things, uh, we have a real real great opportunity to to not have to have somebody come in and do a facial, re a facial reconstruction of the skull, they can look at the clay form around it, if, if, if that's all true and correct. Um, again, I am not a dentist. I'm just telling you, this went in my mind when I held these things in my hand and saw them and saw the shapes and the, the, the dried out blood and the spongy part of that tooth where the enamel's missing, that's when it became real for me. And so that's why those are going back because people don't understand. I feel blessed in my lifetime to even hold something like this, you know, uh, just given the opportunity. I mean, I don't, I don't know very many people that have gone to South Dakota and held the specimen of the Rex tooth that they have up there. You know, the guy from Brave Wilderness just recently did that. And the guy said, you're one of a few, a very few. So I feel very proud and lucky to be a part of this. Uh, but again, I'm here on a support basis for Martin. Uh, Martin felt coming into the show, all I'm going to be able to do is say, look, I was digging in my yard and I found this thing and I'm going to have a hard 
time for people understanding what I'm saying and, and what I'm getting at here. And people need to understand that there's, this is a whole new avenue of research. And have you ever heard of dino mummies, Max? Okay, most people haven't, but research it. It is like a bog body, but it's a dinosaur that's petrified with flesh. It literally, they found one in Canada recently, and you see the whole outline of the dinosaur and everything because the flesh petrified along with the bone in the right conditions. But they haven't come out in the public and started saying that. So when Roger Spur, who we got permission to share his work, started looking at this many years ago, he started realizing if a dinosaur can petrify, so can mammals. But now I'm finding what looks in my yard to be like a petrified finger, but it's the size of my head. And started finding all of these things and started doing DNA testing on mega giants. Now we're talking things that are quarter mile, a mile tall and getting DNA testing and stuff done on that himself independently. And he's going nowhere with it. He, academia has turned the other cheek on him. So when we saw this, we're like, what's everybody going to do with this? And as expected thus far, it's gotten nowhere. It's people, I put this in archaeology groups, and they're like, so you've got a big old hunk of mud uh, with rock underneath, you know? It, and I'm like, can you not see the detail in it? Can you not be a little bit excited about this? And I, I, I'm honestly not getting it. But that is the connection. That's what people don't understand. It's not always just a fossilized bone. There are chances of things for people to say, well, how could this thing be so well preserved and not have scattered over a long time? Whether you arguably believe that that's 4,000 years ago, when that happened, or you go with the Sumerian tablets and what we know about cave drawings and everything, and you know, it being up to 40,000 years ago. Um, you know, people want to sit there and say, well, the earth could never hold the, these titans. They could never, it could never hold these giants. Well, there's a lot of assumptions based on is the earth history that we're being told the exact earth history is the earth shape uh, definition, how it's created, how, 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 how it was created. Is everything we're being told accurate? Um, and so that's where I got into with the whole Titans, Giants, and Mud Fossils was trying to look at how could these Titans be on the surface of the earth? How could these Giants be on, this, on, on the face of the earth? So we have a few even, questions coming. Yeah, in. go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to um, get into these because it's kind of coinciding with what you're talking about now. Yeah. Um, Scottish Sovereign has a few questions here. I don't know if I should just go right through them all. I think I'll do that. Sure, I'll do my best. Um, sure. Okay. So he's, they say giants are mentioned in Genesis, and many have been found of uh, magnificent size. Question: Does uh, the guests think that the giants are the Nephilim trait or Anunnaki origin? And also, does the guest agree that the findings of Zachariah Sitchin, and in fact, that we are offspring of the giant sons, ergo genetic manipulation approximately 12,000 years ago? And then finally, uh, they say, does the guest of the show think that Nibiru comes into the equation? So there's a few different things we're going on here. We're going on Sitchin, we're going on the on the, on the Bible and okay. Um, Nibiru. Okay, so I study hollow worlds, and with hollow worlds, if you reread Genesis and if you understood that the Earth could house giants, and just presume for a minute that Adam and Eve, if you're looking at the biblical Adam and Eve for either a crime and or what is listed in the Bible as eating from the tree of knowledge, if you want to go that route. Remember, Moses is writing this, and he didn't have any more information before Adam and Eve showed up. So he wrote about, you know, the, the beginning story, which coincides a lot with the, with the example given in the Sumerian tablets as well, with them arriving on the planet and documenting 
all of the life on, on the planet and that sort of thing. But if they were cast out of the earth, it is said, according to um, a biography written in 1908 of Olaf Janssen, that these beings live to be about a thousand years old because of the pristine and clean environment inside of a planet. Also, although I haven't verified this yet, um, I've been seeing a lot of people claiming that the book of Enoch claims that uh, Noah was 90 cubits tall. I think that might be a bit of an exaggeration, but it might not be. If pre-flood, the earth was much bigger, in, and, and when I come in in a couple weeks, um, I can talk about this more. But if the earth was much bigger pre-flood, it could house much larger giants. Nothing on the scale of what the Titans were, but pretty big giants. And if Adam and Eve were kicked to the surface of the earth, they would now be under solar radiation, heat, not as good of farmland, uh, not as good at things, smaller amounts of food, that sort of thing. And it would have taken a toll not only on their lifespan, but also their size, and their size would have diminished over time. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I hope that answers to that question. Um, could this guy be a surface-dwelling pre-flood being in existence? Possibly, because if you take all the generations listed in the Bible down to that, they could have shrunken that more time, or that much over time. And we're talking beings that lived like a thousand years at first that diminished down. But then we go to the Sumerian tablets and Zechariah Sitchin and that. And in that, you have the Igigi on Mars, the Anunnaki on Earth, and then the Nephilim who are from Nubru. And they came, right? They came to Earth looking for gold. That's the story that they had. They were looking for gold to repair the uh, to repair the ozone on on uh, Nubru because it used to be a volcanic surface planet, and it was putting off a lot of volcanic activity and ash, and that was protecting the atmosphere on their planet. But over time, it had cooled, and the ash had diminished, and the king there tried to blow up the surface, which is what gives it that pockmark appearance and is known as biblical wormwood, I'm guessing, okay? This is, you know, wor wormwood is dis dis described as a planet that has knots like planks of wood. Now, if they sent these big weapons to the surface of Nubru and try to blow it open, it's going to have huge scars and craters on it with sooty bands from the ash that's still in the atmosphere, very much like wormwood, right? So... They tried that. They tried mining the asteroid belt, which is full of Titan remains and remains of Tiamat. Okay. When that failed, they thought they were done. Alalu was uh, challenged by Anu to a wrestling match. He lost. And in desperation, he flew to Earth where he found gold. He found habitable surface. But when they came here, they got very sick. And when they got very sick, they started having people saying, I'm not going to dig gold for Nubru anymore. And that's when they supposedly created the first slave. The first slave was very unruly, very animalistic and brute-like. So they wiped that one out. They put a little bit more of their DNA in it and they actually put the embryos again into their own, their own people versus the animals here so that they would be, be listening in, in their bodies would be hearing the voice of, the gods, you know, versus a wild animal. And they came out a lot better, so much better that they were attracted to them and they made love with some of them or just raped them because they were slaves. And that's when Adapa was born, who is akin to what we call our biblical Adam. And Adapa was flown to Nubaru and he was only fed slave foods uh, because they were afraid he would end up eating the foods on Nubaru and he would have longer lasting or everlasting life like they do. I think some of that could be time dilation too, because the time on our planet and what scientists talk about. Are Oops, hang on. We got accidentally muted here. I'm not going to answer this. There we go. 
Can you repeat that last little I'm bit? Sorry, I'm, I only have one device on the phone. I got a call. I, I hung it up. So, oh. I, so okay. this, is, this is what I have. That's why I had such a hard time connecting, and I apologize. No problem. But yeah, I'm very knowledgeable in a lot of these things. Can I say that this, this guy is one or the other? I, You know, this whole 24-foot giant, he throws a monkey wrench in all of my research. It is so fantastic. And the only thing that I've seen that matches the size and dimensions of this guy is in uh, South Africa, there is a footprint, if people want to look it up, called the Footprint of God. And it's in granite, and it looks like a footprint, and it's about four or five feet big. And that would almost fit pretty much the dimensions of what we have here with Rex. Um, but also when I looked at Rex, I just got this overwhelming sensation of infant or child. But I'm not sure if that's right, but he looks a lot. He, for some reason, is the shape of his elongated skull is foreign to me, but that could be the shape of their skull too. You know what I mean? Or it could be where it crushed inside the ground. Um, but to me, it looked like that like screamed out infant to me, but that doesn't mean it is. You know what I mean? Um, so I hope I answered all the questions. Is is he just a washout? Oh, this is another one. Is he just a washout from hollow earth during the flood? Okay. Um, what I was getting at with the, the earth possibly having been bigger. What we do know is that there was a huge it, comet or breakup of a comet that hit Canada and it's arguably 10 to so many thousand years ago. Such a big impact, it could have driven the surface of the crust around up to even 60 degrees, changed the poles, changed the polarity, and collapsed the crust of the Earth downward, which would make it to where nowadays, just like when you see on an island, you'll see creatures that are much smaller. Maybe our creatures are much smaller based on the size of the planet now. And this guy could be from inside the earth and where they were drilling like mad to get the aquifer flowing again because it was broken from all of this crushing down. The water couldn't get through to the inside of the earth. They had to repair the fountains of the deep per batum inside of the Bible. And then the waters, after they repaired it, the water started receding. But we're talking about when they breached the surface, you know, towards the aquifer of the earth, we're talking about a massive amount of water. And if that came flooding out of there like that, it could have killed every giant for miles in there and washed them right out and had it land. You got another call again. Just hang on. But I hung it up. <laughs> You're popular tonight. <laughs> yeah. I'm turning off the ink. I hope, or no, that's the ink call. Let me make sure. I wish there was a Is that better? Yeah, Can you're you okay. Me? I was just turning down my ringtone, so at least uh, if there is, well, it won't ring through. Yeah, it actually automatically mutes you, so we don't hear that, so we're good. Um, Scottish okay. Sovereign ha had another question. Um, what does the guest think of the... Uh, watchers feeding the info back to the creators, the uh, creators not being happy, and that uh, the guys come in and get back to reclaim what they created. Well, it depends on who you label as the creators and if you call them your gods or not. Right. Um, you know, uh, my my take on things is maybe different than others, but I believe that matter is in proportion to space out there. And then there's energy that is the observer, inhabitor, and manipulator of all. And we have existence out of the physical, existence in the physical, and existence outside the physical in an electrical state. And by nature, we're always trying to transition to the next matter. But because right. energy is equal to space and matter, that is how you can become an entity living in space. There's not enough matter 
for all the energy to go into. You have to take turns. And if you're infinite, you want to go into matter and forget and not remember because you're infinite and it takes, you know, it would take a toll on your mental status to constantly have the same thing going on. And I like it. Right. To, it's like a vacation I mean, from knowing yeah, all. Everything. That's the way I yeah. see life. And you should treat it like a vacation and be good to others. It took me a long time to get to that point. But yes, be respectful, be kind to others. If others are trying to bring you down and you just can't, See and it's them, also, then move on from them because right, it's not it's also fun to figure it out too. You know, it's, but, it's trying to figure things out. <laughs> yeah. So the other thing with this is that, um, and the guest was talking about: Are the creators mad about what's going on here? If you look at the Anunnaki, they would have been our body creators. We all it was was our species. If you believe in this way. Our species was taken from the natural kingdom and the slow progression of growing into a species if we survived because we were pretty ape-like. We were pretty weak to begin with, and we were made weaker by the DNA that they put in us later. I think there's reasoning behind that. You know, we're definitely not as strong as the rest of the species that are, that are on this planet, you know. I, I dare you to go arm wrestle an ape, you know, but if we were natural from this planet, we should be a lot stronger than we are and a lot more um, impervious or uh, what would be the word less susceptible to disease, all of those things. Now, are they mad about the way things are being run? I don't know. I do know that I had a guy contact me from Greece in 2012 and he told me, and this is before I was doing much of this research. It was so foreign to me that at the time out of ego and my misunderstanding, I blocked him. This is in the days when YouTube would get, you have people be able to get a hold of the creator of YouTube videos directly. And he said that the, Titans of Tiamat had retreated to either Saturn or Jupiter and became what our, we call our Greek gods. And they were displeased with the Anunnaki, which is the Nephilim that came here and created humans. In doing so, they created a slave colony. And humans were and are actually souls from all over the solar system and beyond that keep getting sucked in and pulled here and trapped in this slave-like existence. And so they came here. And they battled the Anunnaki and imprisoned them in cities underneath the ground around Earth. And they surface sometimes. They're the red-haired, pale, pale white, you know, lock love cave giants, the giant of Kandahar, that kind of thing. Um, he said that they, that they surface sometimes because they find the right route and accidentally make the surface. Uh, because their skin is so pale, they don't come out except for at night to hunt and feed, that sort of thing. So... Um, and the reason that they came and they battled was because we literally, our souls were being stole for their, from their kinship. And they came in about the time that this deluge happened and they put the Anunnaki away. The Anunnaki weren't sent home to Nuru because they didn't want them. They were diseased and DNA ridden and they were, how should I say, they were so far separated from society and the way they lived and, and were barbaric. They were not wanted back home. So, um, I think that we were left to fend for ourselves, but within a society that we still strive to get gold to trade, but we're in charge of that now. And basically, if you can believe all of these things, then it is our own species we need to be looking at about our care and why we're being treated the way we are. The people right. at the top that have figured this out and they have taken control of this system so that they can trade. Another important trade um, material is salt, but there's so much salt that we don't have to worry about that. But salt is rare within inside of planets because it washes out to the surface. So our planet has tons of salt from that happening over time and time and all the decay. So it's, it's not as hot of a commodity as gold, Gold is a very hot commodity because it naturally forms within the core or the center star of a planet, depending on if you believe in the solid 
world hypo- uh, theory where it says the hollow world hypothesis. But remember, Tiamat was destroyed. And Zachariah Sitchin said Earth only was created from Tiamat. I believe all the inner planets were. Right. Uh, and also supernova stars are actually diamonds inside too. Yeah. Um, I wanted to go back um, to uh, Martin and this situation that yeah. we're going through no here, here. Thank you for having uh, me on. We're, yeah, we were kind of going off topic there. We could definitely go through yeah, that in the next uh, in two weeks. Um, yeah. I don't know if Martin wanted to add anything or talk a little bit more about um, um, his impressions of everything. And uh, it's, it's up to you guys of what you guys want to do or if Chris wants to continue. Yeah, Martin, be, before anybody says anything, uh, Nicole, I, was, I just sent you those exact words that you just said just now. Did you? Telepathy, and you picked up on it. I mean, to the last word, last <laughs> sentence, oh, well, and I'm glad you picked up on that. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask the same question that you're going to ask Nicole, so I project it to you. Uh, Martin, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, uh, go ahead and continue, and uh, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, okay, thank you, uh, Chris. Uh, you go ahead and continue with what you forgot to tell us. Go ahead and continue. Uh, I forgot where I left off. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there, was a, there was one thing I, I forgot to say. Um, after they dug the sewer, and I came back and everything, I noticed that I saw a lot of um, black rocks and black clay and black dirt like scattered all over the place and I remember from what Roger Spur was saying is when the colors of our blood when it gets into the dirt and everything and that's what he looks for when he's looking for fossils he looks for the, the arteries and the veins and he looks for the colors that come out and so I got to thinking I thought they hit a giant you know I thought they just dug up a giant that was there and then when I found that 22 inch long I'm going to say it's a toe, uh, animal's toe or dinosaur toe. It's at the other end of this creature that is biting down on, on Rex. So this thing's probably like 60 feet long or something. It's, it's a pretty good waves. And I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to, to dig much of that because that's my septic area. I don't think I'm going to be able but I'm going to work my way to that eventually. And then I'll just stop wherever I have to stop. You know, but I have to be real. I, I take it real slow. I don't use any heavy equipment now. With Rex, it's never been. I never use any heavy equipment with him because he's on the hill and it's too steep for my my backhoe. I started doing wheelies and stuff, and I was <laughs> really got scary. So I, I didn't get anywhere near him with it. But I use a um, I, I use a shovel, and I just get the top of the grass, the, the roots. And they come up pretty easy because it's only a little bit of dirt. There's not a whole lot of dirt there. You would think over thousands of years it would have been two feet of dirt. So I don't know what's going on, but that ground was never tilled. Um, it's been in the family for probably 100 years, and nobody's ever done anything but, but mowed it for hay. And I'm the first one to break ground. Well, actually, the guy doing the sewer was... And um, if if this if a farmer would have say way back whenever would have dropped a plow into the dirt, he would have plowed all them bones, rocks. He wouldn't even known there were bones. He would have thought he would have just seen rocks and clay and dirt, and wouldn't have thought nothing of it. He probably would have picked up all the rocks and tossed them. I don't know what would have happened when he hit that hit his head if he would have hit Rex's head. You know, with it being as big as it is, I don't know what would have happened then, but you can dig this stuff up, and if you're not, if you don't recognize what you're seeing, you're just going to think it's a rock. And I got lucky; nobody touched that field ever, and I'm able to see him as he was, as he died. I just can't figure out how they all died at the same exact moment, instantly. You know, just an instant, like someone came in and froze them or electrocuted them or 
something. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's weird. It's just, they got stopped in the tracks while they're in the middle of eating. And it's, it's, it's going to be a nice scene to look at when I finally get it all uncovered. But I really would, if I could give some professional help that they could bring a crew out would be good because everybody's got a job to do. Everybody can be doing stuff and moving dirt and hauling stuff and marking things and writing stuff down. I can't do all the stuff that needs to be done. It's impossible. I'll never, I'll never get it done. So I'm basically, if I see a, like I'm finding a lot of teeth and it's, it's not, it's not Rex's teeth, but I'm finding, uh, say he, I'm going to say he's like humanoid cause I don't know what he is, but I'm finding baby teeth that look just like his, but they're little, like the thing was a newborn. So I'm finding a lot of little teeny teeth and I'm finding a lot of medium sized teeth. And then with the, with the animal, I'm finding like three different sizes, a small, medium, a large. So the one that got dug up, the one that's got Rex in his mouth, he's not the biggest one. He's like one of the smaller ones. He's, he's up more on the small end. Um, the, there's a, there's some really big, huge teeth that I found and I mean, they're gigantic. I laid it down on the ground and put my foot up to it, and my foot was smaller than it. Can you imagine having a tooth that your, all your teeth weigh, like, 20 pounds? <laughs> they, they, they're big. Whatever it is, whatever it is, I'm hoping we can find out. It's going to be exciting. Anybody have any more questions? No, you just hang on there and... Uh... Uh, Friday, I'll contact the people that uh, me and Nicole found on the, on the internet, and we'll try to. Uh, I'm going to contact them and talk to them, and then, if, uh, like I said uh, earlier, uh, you give me permission to give them your phone number so yeah. they can contact you directly. Is that okay with you? Yeah, that's great. Okay, I'll do that on your behalf for you. And uh, the GoFundMe, I think it needs to be continue on so uh, people can donate whatever they can afford and to get this all this DNA process. Uh, but maybe these people that are there in Raleigh, they're professionals and archaeologists and, and all this stuff that uh, maybe they'll just come out there and take their samples and do their own tests, you know. Maybe you won't have to pay for the DNA, but you know we'll we'll try it. I'll try it many different ways to help you out. Okay. All right. Yeah, that'd, that'd be great. You got my word. And uh, and uh, Chris Chris uh, uh, Baird is going to be on my show on the fifth of December. I'm going to talk about uh, Hollow Earth. He seems to know a lot about it and been researching it for uh, quite a while. So um, he'll be on my show on the 5th of December. And uh, n uh, next, next week will be Matthew Bueno. He's coming back to the show again to do uh, uh, two more segments, uh, one hour apiece, and he'll be back next week. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, one little bit at a time. You know, everybody will I'll allow everybody to come back again. I will ask you again to come back uh, um uh martin and uh we can get you uh and by then when you bring your back uh the people that i'll be contacting on friday i'm sorry i meant to do it today but i got a little busy uh my personal things but uh um so i'll i'll be definitely getting you a little a bit of help here and any anybody out there i just got to say that uh, Wolf Spirit Radio is uh, a self-listener uh, 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 radio station. Please donate. That's how we bring the shows to you and the programs. We always try to bring the truth to you. That's our main goal here on Wolf Spirit Radio, to bring you the best of the best of the best, to bring you the right news, the right um, of all the stories, and all everything we have uh we we also have uh um on our chat room here uh scottish severance he is from another radio station that i'm 
always uh, glad that she's here all the time and asking questions and because uh, she's got really good questions, believe me. She's very informative. Yeah, she has her own radio station. So, you know, you're welcome to go on her, sh on her show whenever you want. Um, uh, Severance, I mean, Scottish, whenever you need uh, um, that communication the, of these fine people, just let me know. And Special Forces 1953 at gmail.com is my uh, email. And my website is max21d.com. And YouTube is max21d. And Facebook is max21d, too. Well, actually, uh, Isaiah Max Steele is my uh, Facebook. Um, <coughs> is anybody here in the panel want to ask a question, like John or my, my wife or uh, Russ? You got Russ, you got any questions? Uh, no, I'm I'm pretty pretty well uh, satisfied with what I'm hearing here. A lot of a lot of good things and uh, very interesting as far as uh, uh, um, finding the fact that they are finding these items. And you would think a college um, would want to take advantage yeah. of excavating or partaking in the identification of this sort of thing. And it would be a great learning experience for. I was going to say it would be a very, very good learning experience for them to, to dig instead of just getting a bone. They're getting the like the tissue, the flesh, the shape of the body, and it's it's all there. And to me, it's like, why aren't people waking up? What's going on here? You know, this is something that should have been the whole world should should be at. Wow, you know. And it's like I I, I got let down, and so. I'm hoping you'll bring me on some more, and I'll keep you all informed on how we go and what we find out. And yeah. I'll let you know how it develops as I uncover it. But the other giants, the the other ones that are in the grave, all lined up. I'm not, I don't want I don't want to touch them until somebody knows what they're doing comes along, and then we can start with one of the end ones, and maybe we can get his whole body out as in in one piece. I mean, he might be 25 feet long or 50 feet long or whatever, but if we get the right people and we know what we're doing, we should be able to get a body out of there and then okay. up the spray. You don't have to worry about it rotten or, or anything. It's not, it's not going to do anything. You know, just hopefully it all stays together. You know, hopefully the, the clay, if you're real gentle with it, you won't break the clay. <laughs> Listen, Martin, I want to tell you something. Uh, back in 2014, there was a program on the History Channel uh, they were looking for, uh, you know, the same thing that you got there at your at your home. They were looking for, for uh, giants, but they never never actually found one. But other people were showing them that they they have found them. But I'm trying to trying to locate those people on history on the History Channel. I'm going to help you in every way I can. I do have friends in many places. Yeah, I, I did. I, I had uh, written to a few people that are into the Giants, and there was a guy that his name is Jim, I think. Oh, I forget now what their name is. One was one guy's name was Zimmerman. Uh, anyway, they 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 found uh, hundreds of um, Giants up in Ohio, and it was like they were too busy to even mess with me. But they they did finally tell me that if I had DNA and could prove that that it's you know, human or whatever, then they would come out. But they don't want to just stop what they're doing and come look at what I got because they don't, they just can't comprehend what I got. I see. Um, but, uh, several uh -huh. different people. And I even, even like with uh, Roger Spur, <clears throat> even though he knows what I have, he still wants more proof because it's, it's not the same when you're looking at it on TV or on your camera or whatever, your phone, you're not seeing what I'm seeing. You're not, you're not, if you were there with me on the dig, dig, moving the dirt out of the way and following the clay and seeing the shape, you would be freaked out. And it's totally, it's nothing like looking at a picture. You know, and I've tried my best to, my, I just, I have a lousy camera. I just, I haven't got really good pictures, but someone's, someone needs to be here so they can see what's going on and they will be freaked out. I couldn't believe it when I when I start uncovering his arm. 
you know, and I, like it just it just kept on going and going. I'm like, holy crap, this thing is big. Look at the arm on this guy. And then I I kept uh, hoping that I would find his head. I'm kind of like, that'd be cool. It'd be really cool to find a giant head, <laughs> any kind of you know fossil head. And there, sure enough, there it was. But he's you know he's damaged pretty bad, and I think his lower half is probably scattered. But I don't, I'm not 100 percent sure. But something don't seem right. And then when I found that other bone further away from him and something's eating on that, I think the, the main one was holding him by the head that broke his neck and was just hanging on to him, and all the others are pulling parts off of him. Uh, Martin, you know? yeah. uh, if you uh, were uh, able to uh, provide some photographs or post any of this stuff on YouTube, I'm sure uh, – other people could tra uh, to uh, send this information around to where people would definitely be of interest. It's just okay, a matter well, of someone with uh, either a camera that could, uh, 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 like an iPhone or something like that, uh, short clips that you could throw all together or have thrown together that uh, you would, uh, uh, it would definitely draw interest to you. Yeah, well, I, I did some videos. I've got about uh, 17 videos and i my uh my youtube name is is how to guru g-u-r-o-o and if they go into the search box and just put put in how to guru my my channel will come up and you can go into that and see all my videos that i've done from the very beginning now at the beginning i didn't know what was going on i'm 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 making up stuff as i'm going because it, it seemed like he was in a battle and I'm like, man, I hope I can find his sword. And I went and I got my metal detector, and I was going all over the place hoping I could find weapons. And But he has no clothes so far. He has no hair. Um, there's no money, no weapons, no nothing so far. I mean, they're naked out in the open, and unless, unless the clothes just deteriorated over time, you know. But I see nothing in the dirt. It has any kind of material or, or anything. There's no metal, no, no nothing. So, John, go uh, ahead. You had a question. As you follow my, as you follow the the movies, you'll see how it progresses. And I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to put another one out tomorrow. Yeah, I'd be interested in seeing more of your, those clay impressions where you've got part of the shape of the flesh, or maybe this this creature may have had scales or some or type wings. of texture to their skin. Yeah. If you uh, can un uncover some clay that has that, that would be, um, you know, really good things to take pictures of. Yeah, it's like uh, there's an area above, higher up the hill from where Rex is, and just past where his hand would be and, and the mouth and everything, and it's like rippled. You know, it's got ripples, and it's a big cover in a big area. I can't get off the, off of the clay. There's no, you know, when I when I get away from the body, I'm going to hit nothing but dirt and other types of dirt. But the clay is his body, is the body of whatever. And this is a big spread. And the only thing I can figure is it must have a wing. He must have brought his wing up to protect the babies while they eat. Right. And does it look like a bat wing? Like it has, um, uh, like bones within separating the oh, wings. There's bones in there, and they're and it's wavy. It's like ridges, like a right. uh, it chip has ridges. It's ridged, and it's like a pattern. And you can see it, it's like, I don't know what this is, but there's a pattern here, and there's bones, you know, the fossils. And it's pretty interesting, but it's I've got a lot more to go before I get off of it. You know, because you can only do a little bits at a time, and I, I quit at that end, I come down the other end, and I got thinking, I'd rather come off of the, the creature's head so I can at least see what his head looks like. And see if he's got, you know, scales or feathers or whatever. <laughs> you know, you right. know, I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm, I want to find out really fast on what this thing is, but I can't take it fast because I'll end up damaging it. So I'm working with a, after I get the, the grass off, I take a broom and I sweep. And then I take um, a smaller, like, hand, a little brush, and I work it back and forth, and you can see all the loose dirt. And then I'll take my... Um, uh, I'll take a screwdriver and I'll poke around and anywhere that there's grass still coming up, roots and stuff, I'll go ahead and dig that on out because I figure that's only, that's dirt, that's not solid, solid clay. The only thing is I, I might 
ter- I notice that their gums are 50-50. So I might be digging into their gums. I don't know why the gums are that way, but every time I got into their gums, it was a mixture of, of clay and dirt. And then when you hit the solid clay, where I mean, it's solid, good clay. That's their body. That's the flesh on their skin, you know, the flesh on their bones. So I kept going south, downhill, 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 and I haven't really come off his head yet. And I, I don't know what's going on right now, but it's just more digging. It's just going to take more time. So I'm just doing little bits here and there with the movies. Keep everybody. I got, a lot, I got about 120 subscribers. And I've been doing the movies, I think, for a, maybe a month or a month and a half. Uh, could you repeat the, your channel again on YouTube? Yeah, it's, it's How To Guru. Just H O T O G U R O O. How To Guru. And it, it'll, you'll go right into it and you click on my face. I, I got a gray beard. You'll see my face and you click onto it and it'll, it'll take you into all, all uh, 17 or 18 uh, films that I did. Some of them are really quick ones because I was on the backhoe. This is when I, I really didn't know what was going on. I wasn't expecting any bodies to be there, but I was digging with the backhoe just to try to come down a foot so I could put the dirt over to one side and make that area wider, and that's when I started hitting more fossils. And I real quick filmed it, and I'm like, hey, I found another one, you know, like that. So I did a lot of them that are like 50 seconds or two minutes or something like that, but I do have some that are, that are 20-some minutes and 40-some minutes. Uh, the last one I did was the worst one. I thought I'd try to do a long, long distance. So I put the camera up high on my Kawasaki mule and aimed it down and thought, well, they'll be able to see me doing anything, but my, my camera was out of focus. The focus just wouldn't come in on it. And I was so far away, you couldn't hear me talk. So I just wasted 40-some minutes of that, and it took about 12 hours to download. <laughs> so today I brought, the, I brought the tripod right by my side, and I worked below the camera so you can hear me. And you can see what I'm doing, and you can see how I'm working the dirt and how the clay is has its own form. And as, as long as I don't dig into that, you know, it keeps its form. And, it, and it's so hard, you can still walk on it. And even when it's wet, I barely leave a – I might leave a few f- footprints, you know, for my shoe. But when it's dry, it's hard. You can walk on top of it. It's real exciting. I just wish I could get people involved and be excited as me. But everybody that I know that – loves what I'm doing. They just live too far away and they can't afford to come out here. Um, Martin, uh, Chris has a question. He raised his hand up. Go ahead, Chris. Oh, I was just going to tell people that his channel is very hard to find uh, under just how to guru. So search digging my giant zero zero three. Digging My Giant or Digging Real Giant 003 and then search for that video. That will get to you to his channel and that's his first video on Digging Rex. And uh, so, so hit like and hit subscribe then you'll and hit that bell okay. and then they'll, they'll, every time I put a movie, a, film, a video out, they'll, they'll get a notice so they can watch it and you can keep up that way. But I'll come back on the show if you want as Yes, of course I want you to come back. And um, I hope everybody's excited as I am. Because, I mean, this has to be a one in a million or one in a one of a kind thing. Because I don't realize what I'm telling them. What I'm saying is clay and, and fossil, they don't understand that the clay is shaped like his body. You know, you can see his arm. It's, he's got a shoulder. He's got an elbow. He's got, you know. Martin, um, one second here. I have only one more small thing to add, and that is in order to see some pictures, if people want to search on Facebook, uh, there is a group called Giants, Titans, and Mud Fossils. Uh, Giants, Titans, and Mud Fossils. And through that group, you can contact both Martin or I. Okay? Yeah, and also, if they, if they go on Facebook... And they put in my name, Martin Rutherford of Fairview, North Carolina. I'll come up and then they can come in and ask me to be friends with them. And I'll click on and they can follow, they'll follow everything I do. And I'm always putting pictures out. Um, every time I progress a little bit, that's really, really good. I'll take some more pictures and, or I'll do a movie. Uh, it's coming along, but it's got a long way to go still. These are big, big creatures. 
you know, when you got to go 60 feet <laughs> by 60 feet, you know, to try to uncover the thing, that's a lot of grass to take up. Okay. Uh, Martin, I have to end the show. Uh, I want to thank you, Martin Rutherford and uh, Chris uh, Baird. Uh, and uh, we just finished on all that just now. Thank so, you. Uh, my website is max21d.com. Facebook is Zaya Max Steel. And uh, my YouTube video is max21d and also bitshoot.com. That's another place you can put your videos to. Uh, it's all under max21d.com. Um, this is the end of the show. I got less than 60 seconds. I have to finish talking. And I want to thank everyone here who's listening, the Wolf Pack in the chat room, and everybody, everybody in the world. Please uh, stay tuned. We'll be back with a, a, a part two of Martin Rutherford and, uh, and Chris Baird. I want to thank everyone here. Thank you very much. And we'll see you next week with uh, Matthew Bueno. Have a good night. Don't say, okay, I got it.